All right, so we just got done watching Square Enix at E3 2019. Sorry to everyone who usually will watch it with me on YouTube. Uh, Ubisoft decided to, for whatever reason, disable my ability to live stream. Hopefully they will have that rectified by tomorrow when Nintendo live streams, because I'd like to watch that with you guys on YouTube as usual as we seem to do every year. Uh, we got to stream everything else other than Square. In fact, unfortunately, Square, I think, had the best presentation so far. They might end up having the best presentation, like, of E3 in general. Again, we still need to see Nintendo, but uh, they, I think, for a little while there, I guess it was Microsoft that had the best one, in my mind. And now Square has overtaken Microsoft for the top spot, so it goes something like, you know, Square, then Microsoft... I, I guess it would have to be a toss-up between Ubisoft and EA. I'm going to go Ubisoft, uh, and then I'm going to go Bethesda, and then EA, uh, in my mind right now. But hopefully that's fixed by tomorrow, and we can live stream, watch Nintendo, uh, their full thing, and it should be hopefully pretty fun. That's the hope, anyway. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, they're, they're apparently fixing it. But Square... I think had a good presentation. I think it was much better than last year by a lot, although last year wasn't great. Now, if you remember, I put out a video uh, ahead of time last week, actually, that said that Square Enix could steal the show at E3. And a lot of people didn't really think that would be the case. But here we are, and I think they did. Again, we've seen Nintendo still, but so far, yes, this has been uh, the best presentation. I do like that they went back and they fixed up how they were making these because they did do it on a full live stage, right? They had like actual people in the crowd. They did a, a you know, that nice looking concert. They opened up to the new game and continue for Final Fantasy VII, which was really cool. Uh, and I like the way that they had this set up. They did bring people out, right? And talk about stuff. They had little platforms for them and everything, but they opened with the game I was really hoping they were going to open with, and that was Final Fantasy VII Remake. So this is the game that I really, really wanted to see from Square, and it's it's delivering. Final Fantasy VII Remake, so far, I say so far because there's so much to this game that we have to see. So far, this game looks outstanding. Like I, from what they're showing here, I'm really happy with what I'm, what I'm seeing. Now, I know there are a lot of people who are, are, are old school, I'm sure like me, who likes more of the, uh, who likes more of the turn-based stuff, right? Whereas we kind of have turn-based here to a degree because you will essentially freeze time and then you can pick things with your active, uh, battle time or the, the active time battle ATB down there. Uh, and you can kind of pick what you want to do at that time when you build it up. So you have, like, weaker hitting attacks, and then as you build it up, you can freeze time, and you'll end up with enemies that are just kind of... They're just kind of floating in the air. They're not, like, moving. Right? You can kind of see that. And at that point, you can decide what you want your character to do, and how you want to go about the battle, and it works the same when you have another character like uh, like Barrett here in the battle where you can switch between them as you play they have spells they do show the materia in his buster sword which was really cool so as you change out materia and weapons you will see it uh really really neat visually i mean the game just looks phenomenal like we've we're all talking about next gen stuff right now with like playstation 5 and xbox scarlet like i'm looking at this game and it it, it already looks really, really good. It's hard to imagine what, what someone like Square Enix will be able to do with a next-generation platform like that. I mean, just, like, the visuals, the animations looked good. There were some really cool scenes as they, as they brought in Tifa where you have, like, Cloud on the ground and, like, an enemy's trying to punch him. He's kind of holding up and blocking, uh, like, like, the shots and everything. They did a lot of stuff with a boss battle. A boss battle went on for a while, Maybe a little too long, I'll admit that. I, I think the boss battle didn't have to... Like, if they had just beefed up, maybe the uh, their their damage a little bit just to make this go a bit faster. Like, more so than what we would do when we played it. I think uh, it would have been gone a little smoother. But, you know, it was a good time. We saw Final Fantasy VII Remake straight up with a boss battle. Uh, we saw a few other things after this where they kind of explain and talk for a bit. Uh, we did see... A few more things when it came to uh, different types of enemies, which was great. We see, like, the cross slash 
uh, their, their like their um, limit breaks and everything. We see Tifa. We see Barrett in, in his more uh, regular laid back setting, which is good because before it was just him, obviously in the battlefield and everything. It's good. To, it's it's good to see them that they will tell the story that Final Fantasy VII fans want. Because up until this point, we've seen a lot of battling and fighting and everything. They did some set pieces where you can kind of see the conversation taking place. Tifa, by the way, looks uh, like the fighting and everything. Everyone looks like different. Like they'll look unique in terms of their fighting styles and how they are controlled. So like, I really like what I'm seeing with this game right now. Like this is what I'm talking about with the animation where he's holding the sword up and getting punched. Uh, like it just, it looks so good. <laughs> so, so good. They did the life is strange two stuff. That was fine. Uh, and then we did move into an interesting one, which was Last Remnant getting a remaster. That's out on the Switch now, actually. I, I need to download it, check it out. But yeah, I liked Last Remnant on the 360. I thought it was okay. I mean, it's not a bad game or anything. It just, it was a bit weird at the time for RPGs in general, but it was different. And it's, I believe it's $20 on the Switch. It's remastered. Uh, it didn't run great on the 360, so uh, I'm curious how it's going to run on the, on the Switch, see if they made it improvements, right? Dragon Quest Builders 2, I believe that's out in July. And then we got Dragon Quest 11. This is 11S and I really want to play this game because they have the classic mode. I've beaten this on the PlayStation 4. I want to play back through it again on the Switch in classic mode by the way. I think I'm going to play exclusively in a classic mode. Yeah. And that's going to be fun, but they didn't give us a available this fall. Uh -huh. This fall is soon, right? That's like Three months? I think it's coming out in September, by the way. That would be my guess. Uh, let me kind of go through a bit further. We had a interesting little indie game there shown, but I wanted to jump ahead just a little bit past some of the other stuff. Sony Music, where you'll have that available on all the different platforms, Spotify and Amazon Music and everything, where you can listen to all the Final Fantasy music, which is kind of neat. We did Final Fantasy 14. I wish I could tell you I'm into Final Fantasy 14. I'm really not. I know Max is. I'm just not into Final Fantasy 14, so I really didn't understand what was going on there. Dying Light 2 looks good. I thought it was interesting that Square was publishing it. They told us about it already. But Dying Light 1 was really, really neat. And I do look forward to checking out Dying Light 2. I believe we had the release date of spring 2020. So you're going to see 2020 a lot. That's a lot of what happened here, but it happens to E3. Basically, they want to get their games out there and put them in front of you so you uh, so you see when they're coming out ahead of the next E3, I assume. Romancing Saga, which is great. People uh, who have not played that. I wasn't big in the Romancing Saga, but I know some people are. It is good to see that come up. So that, that, that's good to see there as well. We had data talk about uh, the Final Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy Mobile game. Not as big into that one either. Uh, but more stuff for that, which is great. They showed Outriders to a degree. It appears to be, from some of the screenshots they showed while they were going around and showing the game, that it was like a third-person shooter, I guess. They, they said it's kind of like a modern shooter. It's They didn't show as much. It's not out for a while. So, like, we're, we'll see it again probably next E3, because I believe it's summer 2020. We'll see it next E3. Uh, so they still have plenty of time to show us more and everything about it. And that's fine. But when they, uh, this is Onanaki, which, which looks interesting as well. Thing about Onanaki is they haven't marketed that much and I think I'm going to enjoy it, but it definitely doesn't look like it's like a massive scale game or anything, but I believe it has the same, uh, uh, person who worked on like Chrono Trigger and stuff behind it. So I think it's worth a look. But they haven't done a great job, I don't think, of selling it yet. They they definitely haven't, like, put it in front of a lot of people. But it's out soon. It's August 22nd, so it's not too much longer to wait for that one. This was the big reveal, I think. So this might not be a big reveal. I want to say, this might not be a big reveal to some people. But if you know the story behind this, where apparently... The source code has been missing this entire time. They were able to get it on PC, but they had a long-winded explanation as to why it can't be on other systems. And it had a lot to do with them losing pieces of the source code that would have allowed them to piece it together, I guess. Well, something happened. And I don't know if they just decided to somehow 
work it from PC to the other platforms or something. Final Fantasy VIII is coming back. It's going, it seemed like to everything. Like, they are just bringing it back. It's going to be Final Fantasy VIII, just obviously up and everything else. But you never know. That could put it in line with it eventually getting a full remake. You never know, right? The fact that they were able to go this far with it is exciting for fans of eight. I liked eight actually quite a bit. So it is exciting to see it come back. It's more about, I think the backstory to the whole thing that we didn't have it before, but now they seem to have figured it out. Someone needs to sit them down with an interview and ask them what happened. Where was it? Were you cleaning out an office one day? And Oh, wait, here it is. (laughs) I, I mean, I don't know how you go from not having the source code and saying it's impossible like last year to all of a sudden be able to release it this year, by the way, 2019. So within uh, five or six months, it will be out. Now, the big reveal was the Avengers, right? They did an entire cinematic story trailer, but they did use in-game, the in-game engine to actually do this. Like they say in the beginning, it's like, oh, we're using the engine and everything to do this kind of stuff. It looks really good visually. Like I look at this and I say, wow, okay, this this looks good. But the problem is I think they're they don't really have gameplay here on display. They're gonna do it on the floor. So we will see impressions, we'll see, you know, footage and everything. They spent time with Final Fantasy VII Remake. I think they could have spent an extra 10 minutes and maybe run through a little part of this game for us at home. Uh, so we could have seen it directly from them and they could have picked a set piece to show us. But all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Now, a couple things to note with this one. It is an original story, full original story from Crystal Dynamics, Square, Disney, Marvel, all that. Uh, And it's going to have you controlling apparently one of the Avengers. So you get to control them. I assume you level them. You have gear and all of that. I'll I'll be honest. I I got some Anthem vibes when they started showing some of it. And I got a little concerned because it is a game at games as a service, which I don't get as excited about because when you play a lot of games, you have limited time when it comes to this stuff and they want this to last years. And I don't, I don't know if ever, like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to play this game for years because they just talked about final fantasy 14. That's another game as a service. And it's like, then they're trying to sell this game to the people who are probably playing final fantasy 14. And it's like, there's only so much time in the day, you know? So that's my, that's always my concern about all of these games as a service showing up. They do show off the characters with uh, Nolan North, uh, Troy Baker, and everything. <clears throat> it's just cool. They say no loot boxes. All DLC will be free, so they won't section people off. And uh, they didn't touch on microtransactions. <laughs> I'm sure there will be microtransactions, yes. How will they do it? I don't know. Will they, uh, will they speed up? The amount of experience you get, you know, th- hard to say, right? Whenever I hear crafting is introduced, I always assume somehow that's going to make crafting easier with money. But they closed out with that. And you know what? I think May 15th, by the way, way later than I wanted to hear about that. I wanted this to be a 2019 game really, really badly. So we got to wait till May 2020. It's before next E3, and they did talk about a beta. I say before next E3 because that means that we probably won't see it again in this capacity next E3. But then they did also talk about how there will be a beta for the PS4. The PS4 will get exclusive content, all of that. So Sony got the marketing deal. That's fine. They showed a picture at the end that showed all of the games and everything that they had talked about. And you look at this, and I say, you know what? That was a pretty good overall conference there's kingdom hearts 3 dlc they talked briefly about octopath traveler and the pc uh they they pretty much covered as much as they could compared to last year where the quiet man the the quiet man yeah was one of their big announcements i'll take it they were missing babylon's fall though which is a little weird to me i maybe that's just still in development with platinum and maybe it'll be really shown off next year maybe they showed it a little too early but much better than last year At this time, Square's had the best E3 conference. I would say, uh, yes, that means above Microsoft. Yeah, I'd say above Microsoft. It definitely goes Square, then Microsoft, then 
pick the rest. <laughs> so we'll see what happens uh, tomorrow with Nintendo. But so far, good job to Square having a, uh, a good E3 conference. It's good to speak uh, uh, nicely about one of these conferences since it has been kind of negative this E3. Kind of status quo, kind of a gap year. So I'm glad to see uh, uh, Square showing up with some heat. It's good to see. Let me know what you guys think about the Square Enix presentation, though, down below. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, dislike it if not. Ubisoft, please get the streaming back on track on the channel so we can stream Nintendo tomorrow and have some fun. And hopefully I'll see you guys then.